Okay, I'm ready to go. Yep, go for it. Okay, a little bit now about laser law. Um, in the UK, any private individual can own any power of laser that they wish. Anything from one milliwatt pointer up to a 2000 watt rust removing machine. That's the law in the UK. It's not the same everywhere, but that's the law in the UK. So all of these, 100 milliwatt, 500 milliwatt, 800 milliwatt, the pards, they're all legal to own by private individuals in the UK. The uh, situation is the same, maybe different in other countries. You do commit an offence in the UK with a laser if you use it recklessly. So if you take the laser and shine, shine it in somebody's eyes or you stand on top of a motorway bridge and you shine it at cars coming towards you or even worse, on the approach to a, a, an airport and shine it at an aircraft, you are recklessly using a laser and you will get charged with that and so you should because it's a dumb thing to do. However, infrared lasers don't give a visible beam of light so the idiots who do that sort of stuff wouldn't get much fun from these because they wouldn't know where they were shining it. And probably the people it was being shown at wouldn't know it was being shown at them either. So I don't think there's really much chance of that. However, as I say, you must not use it recklessly. I certainly wouldn't go around shining this in animals' eyes when you're out shooting. I mean, the farmer's not going to thank you if you blind his cows or his sheep with it. Okay? So, um, really, as I say, the law is that anybody, any private individual, can own any power of laser that is available to purchase. There is guidance, isn't there? There is guidance. Public Health England produce guidance which says that uh, they recommend that class 3 and class 4 lasers are not sold to the public and all of these lasers fall into class 3B or class 4. Class 4 being anything above 500 milliwatts, class 3B being anything from 5 milliwatts to 500 milliwatts. So this is a class 3B laser, it's 100 milliwatts. It's the most dangerous laser here by a long way. You've got far more chance of being blinded by this than you have with any of these others. Yeah, it's 100 milliwatts, the lowest power one here, class 3B. These two, the Solaris, 500 milliwatts, the Black Sun, over 800 milliwatts. Again, um, class, this is marginal for class 3B, this is definitely class 4, but they're not as dangerous as this because they produce wider beams. The Sirius is the safest of all the lasers. It has the, the lowest output power because it's got the largest lens. And as you can, as you probably saw from the measurements, it was lower power and you simply cannot burn a hole in a black plastic bag with this thing. The LEDs are safe. You can't get enough power out of an LED torch to burn a hole in a plastic bag and you would be almost impossible to blind yourself with these. And in fact, LEDs don't, don't even are not even covered by the laser legislation or recommendations. Okay, so taking everything we've said so far into account, safety. If you've got one of these 100 milliwatt pointer type lasers, doesn't matter how far away you are from it, do not look directly at it. Do not ever look directly at one of these pointer type lasers because the beam is so narrow all of the energy is going to go straight into your eye and it will probably damage your eyesight. For the LEDs, worst you can get with these is probably a bit of a sore head. If you do, if you, if you stare at one of these for any length of time, you're probably going to get a sore head. I would say don't look at these any closer than about a, what, a meter from them or something like that. You know, I, would, I wouldn't be staring at these for any length of time. No, if you want to just check that it's on, you can go like that. You'll see immediately whether it's on or off. That's not going to hurt you. With the Vixel lasers, you have to be a bit more careful. Don't go staring at these. If you can't determine whether or not it's on, then if you look very carefully from the side, you'll just start to see a little bit of a glow. That's, that's I have to say, this is my biggest this complaint. Is, yeah, I think so. With all, all IR uh, lasers, IR illuminators, um, the, the one that uh, we tested earlier on when I got here was the uh, Tracer LED Ray IR. 
and it doesn't even, it's, it's a few years old now, and they don't, they don't even say on the box how powerful it is or the wavelength. Um, but these push, push switches, on or off, you can barely tell whether it's on or off. And you, when you think it's on, a few slight presses, there's three different power levels, it's not obvious at all. It's not obvious at all. Sometimes Bruce has been, um, on all, all these uh, lasers and illuminators, Bruce has been looking at the, uh, the gauge, the, the, the dial on his uh, gauge, to even tell whether they're on and what power level they're on. So, the, Sol the Solaris does have one big advantage over the others, it does have an illuminated tail cut. So when it's switched on, there is a light. That, that is the single biggest advantage of the Solaris over the others. Right. The, the fact that you can't tell this is switched on because of the... Because but you, of can't, the you can't tell what power level it's on. Well, this is only a single power. Right, So okay. it's on or off, there's no in-between. And the one, the one you showed me earlier on had a, a dial? Oh, yeah. The, there's another one. Yeah. This is a bit of a one-off, though. This is the, what's called the XLRM. This was originally an LED illuminator that came with the Drone Pro. Very, very well manufactured. This has a tail switch, a rotary tail switch, with off at each end and increasing power levels. That's, you go. that's what I would like to see on all illuminators. Just for functionality, when you're in the field, is it on or off? What power level is it on? A tail switch like that should be on everything, in, in my opinion. As a newcomer to a relative newcomer mm -hmm. to IR, yeah, you want yeah. to know is it on or off? I, I, what I, level is it on? I, ha I have to, I have to agree with you. Um, at, at night in darkness, you can actually put your hand in front and you can see some light. You will see some red light reflected, but I'll say at, at eight fifty nanometers. At, at eight fifty, yeah. At nine forty, you wouldn't. Probably not. No, probably not. Okay, so so basically, what we're saying is, with all of these, with these, you never look into them. With these, you can, but stay about a metre away. With these, you can, but get as far away as you can. And minimise the amount of time you actually spend looking at it. It's time and distance yeah. is the two things. The longer you look at it, the more energy goes into your eye, the more damage it gets done. The closer you are to it, the more energy goes into your eye, and the more damage you can do. Basically, the mechanism is that the back of your eyeball heats up with the power from the laser, and if the heat in the back of your eye is too much, it destroys the cells at the back of your eye and you lose either all your vision or you get black spots in your vision. So to minimise the amount of energy going into your eye, you either min you do, you minimise the amount of time you look at the illuminator and you minimise, the, the, you maximise the distance away from the illuminator so that you minimise the amount of power that's getting into your eye. And common sense really has to play a large part here you know, you've got to realise that these things are dangerous or can be dangerous and treat them accordingly. Yeah, They're potentially, potentially dangerous, yeah. treat them accordingly and don't be shining, don't be looking at them unless you absolutely have to and then from a long way away and only for a very short time uh, and don't point them at other people. Yeah, and be aware, just like, same with red laser pointers um, and for example on the there's a, red, a visible red laser on the part 007 and, oh, we've got the part of light mounted. Yeah. But so the same with uh, IR lasers as with visible red lasers. Watch you don't point it, as well as don't point it at uh, people, animals, pets and such like. Don't point it at cars. And it doesn't matter if it's a parked car, if it's got a number plate, a reflected number plate, that laser can come back to you. If you try that with a red laser, you will see the beam coming back to you. Same with the uh, re reflective high-vis vests. Mm -hmm. So be aware of these things. Um, I've got a background in engineering surveying. I did a, my thesis on my honours degree was on lasers, visible red lasers for surveying. So I've done some research in this and I've got a bit of a background in it. You have to think beyond the, the obvious common sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we often forget about, Russ quite correctly says, we often forget about what happens to the laser beam once it's, it's gone out. It's, some of it's going to come back. It can reflect from almost anything, mm. you know, any sort of shiny object that will reflect and, and you could potentially be getting laser light back. And again, this is why these are dangerous because it's coming back as a collimated beam, whereas yeah. these are sending out a diverging beam, so anything that's coming back is even more divergent. 
so the risks are lower again with these. One other little gem here of information. When I got here this morning, my Tracer LED ray IR torch, the old one, that I got as a freebie, and the um, Black Sun Dark Engine, both had existing 18650 batteries in. Uh, this is a button top or pin top for the LED ray and a flat top for the uh, for the other the other illuminator. Now these have been on charge for several hours. You can see the LED ray is almost fully charged and the flat topped 18650 battery is it's finally gone more than over one bar but um Bruce. It's showing, showing 3.79 volts. That, that arrow tells you which battery it's measuring. You're getting the stuff information. Right. Showing 3.79 volts. It started at 1.6 volts, which is way, way, way too low for a lithium-ion battery. Normally, at 1.6 volts, they're dead and will never, never live again. Right. This one is ah, well, maybe, maybe, so it's, maybe this one may live again. It's may live. It may live again. It may. If it does, it probably won't be as good as it was before. Right, okay. What, what, does, it, does it got a capacity on it? 11.84, okay. So that's me. I've just discovered the hard way that these 18650 batteries, lithium ion batteries, you mustn't let them uh, run too low because if they run below, what was it, 1.6 volts? Oh no, if they go below about 2.7 ish, really, that's usually. If they go below 2.7 volts or thereabouts, they're not going to be usable in future. I wasn't aware of this, so I'm going to have to well, keep an eye on these from now on. Okay, here's two lithium batteries, both Panasonic's, both 3400 milliamp hour, and you'll see that one has got a gold colour strip up the side and is slightly longer. The slightly longer one is what we call a protected cell, because at the top there, there's actually a very small electronic circuit board that's got some components on it that do three things. They prevent the battery from discharging too far, which is what happened to this one. They prevent the battery from giving out too much current, and they prevent the battery from being overcharged. Okay. So th that's three very useful things. These, these protective cell batteries are much less likely to be damaged by leaving stuff switched on. Right. So if, you, if you'd left this battery in your illuminator and left it switched on, it just goes down and down and down and down and gets to like this 1.6 volts. Right. Whereas with this battery, the protection circuit would have cut off at about 2.9 volts and it would have, it would have stopped working. Right. But it would have pre prevented damage to the battery. So in future, I'm going to try and go for protected cell batteries. However, however, there's always a downside. Ah, okay. That protected cell battery will not fit inside a pad. Ah. It's too long. Right. And it's actually slightly too wide. Right. Okay. So, huh. that's, you know, pros and cons. Right. Okay. So, in that case of pads, we're left having only unprotected cell batteries. Mm -hmm. um, and as you've seen, we need to prevent them from going below about three and a half. No, about 2.8 volts, roughly. About 2.8 volts. Mm -hmm. However, if you do put an unprotected cell in the pad and you leave it switched on, the pad has its own internal low voltage detection circuit which switches the pad off at okay. about 3.3 volts. Okay. So you're not going to damage the battery by leaving it in. Right, brilliant. So the pad protects it. The pad protects the battery. Yeah, but if you put this into something like one of these illuminators, which are just, if you leave it switched on, it'll just keep drawing power for as long as it can, then you'll finish up with the situation you have here. With a damaged battery. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks Bruce. No problem.